Hi, I'm Jamie Spister, Australia's Ambassador for the Environment. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional landowners of the sea and country that I'm meeting on today, the Ngunnawal people. They're the First Nations people, and I want to pay respect to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and recognise the contribution that they've had to supporting our land, water, and culture over thousands of years. Australia's Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority is the co-chair of the International Coral Reef Initiative Secretariat, ICRI. On the authority's behalf, I would like to recognise the Secretariat's co-chairs, Indonesia and Monaco. Many of you would know that Indonesia is responsible for managing the largest coral reef area of any country, just ahead of Australia. As one of Australia's closest neighbours, we have a strong partnership and we've worked together over many years on the management and protection of coral reefs and our marine environments. Monaco has also had a long history of investing in the protection of coral reefs and the commitment and passion of His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco in this area has been very evident. Monaco has demonstrated unwavering support for ocean science and encouraging sustainable use of world's oceans. I also appreciate our ICRI founding member colleagues from the United States, which will be officially taking on the ICRI Secretariat role in October. The recent IPCC 6 assessment report determined it was unequivocal that human influence is warming the atmosphere, oceans and land, and that widespread and rapid changes is in the atmosphere, ocean, cryosphere and biosphere have occurred. Marine heat waves have also become more intense and longer. And there is no dispute that climate change is the most serious threat to the health of coral reefs worldwide, and global action is needed to reduce emissions. Australia is, is contributing to the global action through the Paris Agreement and focused on holding the increase in the global average temperature to well below 2 degrees above pre-industrial levels and pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase to 1.5. As a guardian of arguably the most recognised reef in the world, the Great Barrier Reef, or the reef as we call it, which was, was made a marine park almost 50 years ago, Australia has had a long-standing commitment to look at how we support the positive future of our reefs and global coral reefs. When we think of managing our coral reefs, we also think about the people, how people value their reefs and how they rely on them for their livelihoods, their cultural connection, their economic development and coastal protection. We also need to understand the challenges of managing, managing and supporting the resilience of coral reefs in the face of glo the global climate challenge. One central element in our approach is monitoring and reporting. We believe this is key to the foundation for all how coral reef science and management is developed and informed. We need accurate data and information that can inform our management interventions. And it can tell us whether our interventions are making a positive difference. The Australian government has invested over $3 billion to improve the long-term outlook for the Great Barrier Reef. That investment is focused on three key areas. Firstly, direct action to reduce local pressures, including how we improve water quality and tackle coral-eating crayon of thorn starfish. Supporting adaptation in the face of changing climate through the world-leading reef restoration and adaptation program. And finally, contributing to global emissions reductions through the Paris Agreement. There is growing need to work together on global action to reduce climate change pressures, to reduce the incidence and impact of marine debris, and to manage our marine parks and global fish stocks in a sustainable way. Working together on the common goal of protecting and managing our coral reef resources is what brought together eight like-minded countries over 25 years ago. And that's what formed the International Coral Reef Initiative, or ICRI, which we're so proud of today. And Australia is one of the founding nations through our Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority and the Australian Institute of Marine Science. As the co-chair of ICRI Secretariat with Indonesia and Monaco, 
Australia wanted to support the reinvigoration of ICRI's global coral reef monitoring network and the development of the first status of coral reefs of the World Report since 2008. The Australian Institute of Marine Science reinvigorated its role as global coordinator and the release of this report could not have been realised without the tremendous effort, commitment and cooperation among all the ICRI members across the 10 regions around the globe. Science has a pivotal role to play in ensuring our efforts to protect and restore coral reefs are informed by accurate evidence-based information that can be used to galvanise the action at local, regional and global levels. The GCRMN will continue to build regional capability to collect data, provide the most accurate picture to inform these efforts. As the coral reef experts are about to explain, the results of the report are sobering, but there is also hope in the ability of coral reefs to recover. If we can act together if we can make a difference to secure the future of coral reefs for generations to come. This will be critical for our own environmental, biodiversity and human needs. Thank you.